Jaywena wakes up to the sound of her mother knocking on her bedroom door. Her mom calls her to join her for breakfast. Reluctantly, she gets out of bed and heads out. As they sit at the breakfast table, her mom politely asks her what she plans to do about her life. Jenna avoids answering, which irritates her mother further. Finally, her mother calls her out for wasting her life away. Her mom asks her to go back to her life, acknowledging that dealing with a breakup after a 10-year relationship is difficult. However, she believes that a year-long sabbatical, or rather hiding in a room for a year, is too much. She also encourages Jenna to return to New York, and mentions that though she and her father love her, having their 40-year-old daughter living with them is putting a damper on their personal lives as well. Left with no other choice and having been unceremoniously kicked out of her parents' home, she returns to New York. Upon landing, she looks up at the tall buildings and streets teeming with people hurrying to their destinations. Feeling a little overwhelmed, she takes a deep breath and heads to Brooklyn, back to her old apartment, which she proceeds to redecorate. The next day, she goes to the office of her arch-rival, Darcy, who runs Darzine, a fashion magazine, and asks her for a job as a beauty journalist. Darcy accuses her of stealing her boyfriend in the past, and also comments on Jenna's much-publicized breakup. Jenna takes it all, knowing Darcy is just trying to get back at her. She then quietly points out to Darcy that Darzine is not doing too well. That gives Darcy a pause, as she knows she needs Jenna, and vice versa. But not willing to give up that easily, she plays hard to get and requests Jenna to ask nicely for the job. Jenna complies and formally requests the position, to which Darcy eventually agrees. Employed once again, Jenna feels like she is finally making a comeback after the much too publicized breakup with her ex-boyfriend. That night, she and her two best friends go partying. While her friends get involved in the party, she steps away to find a moment of quiet time. Leaning against a glass window in a corner, she finally takes a long breath. Just then, a young man approaches her. He calls himself Eric and tries to engage her in a bit of flirting. She flirts back initially but then points out that he seems way too young to be flirting with her, believing he may even be just out of college. Eric agrees but doesn't share more details, instead, he continues to flatter her, and they end up kissing. The kiss becomes more intense, and they almost start making out in public. Shocked, Jenna pulls back, apologizes to Eric, and walks away. She quickly grabs her friends, and they leave in a rush. The next morning, she goes to Darazine, her first day back in business. Darcy introduces her to the team, and just then, Eric walks in. Darcy introduces him as the new videographer and, surprisingly, her son. She informs Jenna that she would like her to work closely with Eric and come up with some great ideas to save the magazine. Jenna is too shocked to say anything, so she just nods and smiles until everyone else leaves, putting her and Eric alone in the room. All of a sudden, Eric bursts out laughing at the incredulous scenario. Jenna warns him to be serious and not to breathe a word about their meeting, as her entire career depends on doing the job right, and she cannot risk it. She taunts him for being too young and carefree, which irritates Eric, and he in turn, comments on her becoming a cranky old maid. As they begin working together, they continue to bicker and exchange insults at every turn. A few days later, when Jenna is out with her friends, they visit the market. They tease her about Eric and she starts complaining about him and asks them to not even mention his name. At the market, she comes across a designer who has some incredible vintage pieces. She speaks to her and appreciates her work. The designer gives her her card and informs her that she is in the market almost every other day. Jenna and Eric's tumultuous relationship continues even as they try to work together. On one such occasion, they return from a failed interview attempt arranged by Jenna, with a celebrity who was mourning the loss of her pet peacock, and could hardly talk while wailing. They get into an argument on their way back in the cab. Jenna is particularly nasty to Eric, who just steps out of the cab and leaves. The next day, Jenna apologizes to him, but he just brushes it off, saying he has already moved on. They decide to let bygones be bygones and shake hands as friends. As they start discussing work, they discover a mutual love for old classic movies. When a person drops off a classic designer party dress for Jenna, Eric comments on it being beautiful. Encouraged by this, Jenna shares with Eric that she is hosting a party at her home, where her friends are trying to set her up with a guy. She invites Eric and asks him to bring his friends along. At home, she preps for the party with her friends. They make innuendos about the man whom she is meeting. Eric brings two of his friends there, and they all wait for Jenna's date to arrive. In comes a 50-year-old man wearing clothes like a teenager. He talks to Eric, calling him son to act dominant. He talks to Jenna about the weirdest stuff, such as how he and his friends have a place for coffee art, which seems like a very wannabe sort of behavior to her, but she plays along. During one such conversation, he gets offended by one of Jenna's simple questions about not being married, and turns on her, calling her a cliché. Eric overhears this and jumps in to defend Jenna. They get into an argument and are about to come to blows when Eric's friend also joins them. But before anyone can do anything, Eric's friend has a severe allergic reaction to something he ate, leading to the whole party being disrupted. 
everyone goes into a panic mode and tries to make sure Eric's friend is taken to the doctor. Finally, with the friend taken care of and the blind date leaves, Eric and Jenna are the only ones left in the kitchen. They laugh over Jenna's blind date. Eric asks Jenna what she wants from life rather than the man she wants to date. She shares an example of an old movie scene where the actress is in the church and unapologetically behaves in a way that shows how much she is in love with her man. Jenna shares that she hopes for such great love, which would make others uncomfortable, but she still wants that deep, cringy love. They laugh awkwardly, and Eric shares that he understands and approves of it. He then makes a show of trying to leave, but Jenna pulls him back, and they spend the night together. The next day at work, she has a stroke of genius. She shares the idea with Eric, citing their mutual love for old classic movies. She presents her idea of using someone to revive the old classic trends in clothes. She explains how she knows a designer, when she met on one of her outings with her friends, who does great work and could recreate all the classic outfits from those movies. Eric loves the idea, and they go out to meet a celebrity influencer, Remima, who was a close professional friend of Jenna's. They shoot a whole layout with her for the magazine. When she gets home later that night, she listens to a voicemail from her ex-boyfriend asking her to meet him for coffee. Even as she starts feeling upset, Eric surprises her with an impromptu late-night celebration date. He yells her name like Romeo, while out in the street as Jenna looks out her window, and finds him waiting with a bottle of champagne. He invites her to celebrate their work from earlier that day. They walk to the Brooklyn Bridge and talk about the new campaign. Jenna excitedly outlines the next steps for it. Eric stops her by mentioning how well they gel together. When Jenna misinterprets that as partners for work, he clarifies that he is talking about their relationship. Jenna tries to create a boundary between them. She explains that though she likes him personally, she feels they should focus on their professional relationship. When Eric argues, she points out that Darcy would never accept their relationship and that her professional career is more dependent on her. She passionately shares her dreams and expectations about the future and how working with Darzine, which even though difficult, was her way to achieve her goals. Eric argues that his mother does not run their personal lives and they could just as easily start their own business as they have great ideas. Jenna explains that they need someone strong like Darzine to back their ideas if they wish to make it big. Their conversation helps establish how different they are, and because of their different maturity levels, each has a different point of view on life. Then, Eric makes a joke, and they end up making out. They spend another night together, opening up about their deepest secrets. Eric shares the story behind his tattoo, which spells the name, Otis. He got it in memory of his father. He reveals that he and Darcy never speak of him, and even though he knows she feels sad about it, she never shows it to him. Eric expresses his desire to make a film about his father, celebrating his life. Jenna encourages him, calling the idea great. She then shares her own story about her ex, how they were college sweethearts and overachievers, eventually becoming a power couple, but more like a concept rather than real individuals. Jenna realized they were not going anywhere, so she eventually decided to break up. One day, they are at a drive-in, when a model, one of Eric's exes, shows up and spots them. To their chagrin, they are essentially caught, as the model is famous for gossiping. Both worry about the possible consequences. Later, when she is out with her friends, they show her a magazine article about Brian, in which he talks about missing the woman who made his house a home, referring to Jenna. He essentially publicly apologizes to her and extends an olive branch. Jenna comments on how it took him more than a year to miss her but, out of curiosity, takes the magazine home to read it in more detail. The next day, Darcy shows up in Jenna's office. She talks about how well the project is going and how well she and Eric work together. She also mentions and warns Jenna that Eric may have a little crush on her, so she needs to be careful and be very wary of starting anything with Eric in her personal space, making Jenna aware that the rumors had reached her. She wants Jenna to stop while she is ahead and not jeopardize her career. Darcy almost threatens Jenna with career if she even thinks of moving in that direction. But as they continue to shoot for the new edition, they grow closer. Their colleagues and friends start noticing the subtle exchanges between them, no matter how much they try to hide it. In the meantime, their campaign is a huge success, the ads run on Times Square billboards, and they have millions of impressions. Darcy is very pleased. But in their personal lives, they are playing with fire, playing footsies in meetings, hooking up in secret. A picture of their not-so-subtle flirtation is featured in the Times, with the headline Darzine's dynamic duo. Eric gets excited but Jenna is worried. Jenna and Eric decide to keep their relationship a secret. Even though Eric is open to sharing it with the world, he accepts the need for secrecy at Jenna's instance. However, when they attend her niece's birthday party together, Eric also agrees to serve as the event photographer. During the event, Jenna's sister teases Eric, but Jenna pretends they are just colleagues. At the party, her niece pulls Eric away to take pictures with her, while Jenna observes. As Eric captures shots of the little ballerinas posing, their teacher approaches them, revealing that she is friends with Eric. They hug and reminisce about old times. Eric then makes her pose with the girls, clicking pictures of the entire troupe. 
Jenna watches from afar, noticing how easily Eric and the teacher bond. She feels jealous, as the teacher is younger and closer to Eric's age. She walks up to them and introduces herself. When the teacher leaves, she taunts Eric about her, and he gets annoyed. They start arguing, but then Eric points out that they are at a children's party, and it was Jenna's idea to keep their relationship a secret. He walks away. Jenna is left frustrated and angry. Eric, too, leaves upset and tired of acting secretive. Later that evening, when Jenna reaches home, she finds Brian, her ex-boyfriend, waiting for her. His unexpected presence surprises her. Brian apologizes and asks for a chance to talk. Jenna initially refuses, but when he reveals that his mother passed away that day, and mentions how Jenna was his mother's favorite until the end, Jenna is moved. She hugs and comforts him as a friend. Despite her initial refusal, Jenna agrees to go for a walk with Brian to help him mourn his mother. As they leave, Eric, who is on his way to apologize and sort things out with Jenna, spots them walking together and walks away, clearly misunderstanding the situation. After their long walk, when Jenna drops Brian at his apartment, he comments on how the home feels empty without her. She refuses to budge, prompting him to subtly taunt her about having a midlife crisis since she is dating Darcy's son. He also suggests she could come back and live with him instead of in Brooklyn, a place he thought she hated. Jenna corrects him, stating that she always loved Brooklyn, and it was he who disliked it, which is why she moved. She stops him, remarking on how little he knew her despite being together for 10 years, expressing her relief that they are no longer together. He is on the verge of lashing out at her again, telling her that her fling will not last, but Jenna asks him to go inside and leaves, determined to make things work with Eric. The next day at work, Jenna hears that Eric took a day off due to illness. Concerned, she decides to visit him at the home he shares with Darcy, taking a bold step given their decision to keep their relationship a secret. Upon arrival, she finds him alone and they start talking, clarifying the misunderstanding. Jenna shares her worries about missing out on a career opportunity, and after an initial outburst, they unexpectedly start making out in Darcy's living room. Predictably, Darcy walks in on them, leaving everyone shocked and appalled. The furious Darcy confronts Jenna, reminding her of their previous conversation where she had warned her not to pursue anything personal with Eric. Eric is stunned and upset, realizing they discussed him behind his back and Jenna never informed him. When he attempts to comment, Darcy dismisses him, calling him a child and insisting he not interrupt when two grown women are talking. Despite feeling hurt, Eric remains silent, unable to argue with his mom. Darcy insults Jenna and demands she leave her son's life. Jenna looks at Eric, but he avoids her gaze, upset with her as well. Ultimately, Darcy fires Jenna. Jenna cries on her way home in the cab, thinking of all her wonderful moments with Eric. Months go by and we see Eric hauling a Christmas tree home and sitting around, looking at his old plans. He decides to begin shooting for a film, the film that he wanted to make about his father. He calls it Finding Otis. One day he hears a voicemail from Jenna, inviting him to meet. On the decided date, he rushes to the restaurant to meet Jenna, excited to see her. When he arrives at the restaurant, he notices that Jenna has changed her hairstyle, and comments on it, assuming she wants to get back together. Excitedly, he shares that he is filming a movie about his father, as he had mentioned to her earlier, and how he just got a grant for it. Jenna expresses her joy upon hearing this. When he inquires about her, she shares her surprise at landing a fashion and film course at Columbia, and how she feels in teaching, she has finally found her calling. She passionately expresses her love for her newfound profession and how fulfilled it makes her feel. After both have shared updates on their lives, Jenna hesitantly begins talking again. She takes a picture of a sonogram and hands it to Eric, explaining that they are expecting a baby. Eric is shocked beyond words, completely flabbergasted. He goes quiet, much to Jenna's annoyance. When he starts becoming defensive, she tries to reassure him that she does not expect anything from him, but this further enrages him, and he lashes out, asking her to not assume what he wants. He tells her he just wishes to take some time to process it and needs space to think about it, as it is all too sudden and too much for him to take in. When Jenna starts defending herself, trying to make him decide then and there, Eric asks her to stop and give him some room to think. He warns her not to make decisions for him like his mother tries to do. Jenna allows him the time and asks him to reach out when he has something to say. Eric leaves, angry and confused. Watching him walk out, Jenna cries. A few weeks later, Jenna is on a call with her mom who is trying to inquire about Eric while simultaneously blaming him for Jenna's situation. She defends Eric but remains upset that he hasn't called yet. Her mom offers to come down and help once the baby is born. Jenna feels emotional and thanks her, but just then, she hears the doorbell. As she disconnects the phone, her mom voices aloud that she hopes it's Eric. However, when Jenna opens the door, she is shocked to find Darcy there. Darcy sweeps into the house, starts to rant, and goes into a tirade taunting Jenna, saying that now she will understand how she feels, all the while uttering many unsavory things. Irritated and frustrated, she asks Jenna if she knew Eric was making a film about his father, Otis, and whether it was Jenna's idea. She expresses her disappointment about it, 
Jenna argues that maybe she should let Eric do what he wants for a change and not be so controlling. In frustration, Darcy reveals the entire story to Jenna, hoping that now, as a mom-to-be, Jenna will understand. She shares the story of how she met Eric's father when they were young, got married against her parents' wishes, and how her parents never accepted them. She further explains how one day, when Eric was a baby, her husband went out and was murdered because of his lifestyle choices. With no one to support them, she had to forget about her loss and move on to take care of herself, and Eric. Since then, it has just been her and Eric against the world. She gets emotional but controls herself and tells Jenna, in no uncertain terms, that she will not let her raise her grandbaby in such a mess. Jenna shows sympathy, but Darcy is unwilling to have any of it. She tells Jenna that what she learned from her mistakes is to not let history repeat itself, and despite the crazy situation they won't end up having a family feud. No matter what Jenna thinks, expecting Eric's baby means she and Darcy are family for life. With that, she leaves in a whirlwind, just like she came. Jenna is happy and upset simultaneously as Eric still hasn't shown up. The next day, she attends a doctor's appointment, looking at the other expecting couples enviously. Fortunately, Eric shows up, much to her surprise. She is very happy to see him and learns that it was Darcy who sent him. The doctor calls them in, and together they walk inside. As the doctor performs sonography, Eric and Jenna watch their baby, mesmerized. The doctor reveals that it's a boy. They both get emotional, Jenna offers to name the baby Otis after Eric's dad, but insists on giving the baby two last names. Eric is overwhelmed. He then hands her an envelope, stating it was a paternity test from Darcy. Jenna is enraged, but he bursts out laughing and admits he is joking, and that the envelope holds tickets to Darzine's gala. He asks her to be his date. In the next scene, Jenna and Eric arrive at Darcy's Darzine gala. As the limo stops at the red carpet, Eric helps Jenna out. Jenna's friends are awed by how good she looks with her baby bump. Darcy spots them and smiles cattily at Jenna. She answers the reporters who are asking her how she is feeling about Darzine's success and the 8th gala. She makes a confident statement, stating that the queen is pleased. As Jenna and Eric make their way toward her, the reporters call out to Jenna, asking for a news bite. They call her comeback a big success, but she corrects them and shares that it didn't feel like a comeback, rather she feels it was a perfect find. Eric smiles at her and they kiss right there on the steps, announcing their relationship and heading toward their happily ever after.